Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joy. I was scrolling the Twitterverse, as I usually do, and I came across this clip from The Real. Now, I had to come across it on Twitter because I, I have to... I have to make it I have to make it clear that I do not watch the real. I don't want it to be mistaken that I am one who watches the real. Not not from day one till now. No, I ran across this segment from the from the real where the four hosts were talking about prisoners, folks in jail, prison, lockup, whatever you want to call it, who have TikTok accounts and upload videos. They have the TikTok accounts, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. They have these social media accounts with millions of followers and they upload videos now at first when garcelle introed the video she introed the stories that i'm going to play a little bit later they're all kind of quiet you can tell when somebody's like they're looking at something and they don't really want to say nothing but they feel some type of way about it and then somebody said i don't remember who it was but they said that the men and women in these videos and the tiktoks sometimes have millions of followers like that came apparent and that they put their cash apps on their TikTok accounts and their other videos and people of course send them money like hey they're funny I want to support them I want to send them money or I like their story I want to send them money now when that came out it turned real ugly I mean I it was I had a hard time watching and all the hosts started showing what I would say their their true colors are their real opinions about this so I'll let you s listen and you can see what I mean Vice recently reported that many inmates in prison across the country, they're making TikTok videos and it's going viral. Videos show them dancing, mm. doing food tutorials, or just hanging out. I mean, some people think that because, you know, phones are considered contraband that they shouldn't be doing it, but others think it helps combat the stereotypes associated with incarceration. What do you think? Are you feeling the prisoners doing TikTok? What's up, guys? Let me know. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what do you... First of all, I didn't even know this was a... I mean, I, obviously, a new TikTok was big, but I didn't know you could do it from the jail. I house. didn't either. I didn't know that. No, you're not <laughs> supposed to be doing it. That's what I would think. I would think it would be sort of, like, illegal. But on the other hand, you know, social media, TikTok, all of these things are, the, are ways that we as human beings connect now. And, you know, we don't take away their mail, well, a lot of them are doing it because they're getting, um, they get money. They, they're, uh, they put their cash app on their account and they're getting money, you know. So they put their cash app on their, on the front of their account and people, um, are sending them money. And a lot of these prisoners, I was looking at those accounts, they had like millions of followers on TikTok. No. So that's, that's yeah. another reason why they're doing these. I don't think it's right. You in prison for a reason. I don't think it's you right. You in prison to be partying <laughs> and making dance videos. You, you, and shout out to all the prisoners because the prisoners be watching us, Ryan. That's what you don't know. They I was wondering. Us. I was going to ask you that question. Yeah, they do. They, they see me. I was going to ask you that question. Yeah, well, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I agree with you, Lonnie. I don't think it's right. I don't think yeah. it's right, but hey, prisoners. <laughs> I just think... I don't think it's right, and I had to think of it this way. I would have such an issue if someone was in prison for doing something terrible to my family member, and then I'm mm -hmm. seeing them yeah. here on TikTok having a good old time, making videos, getting money from Cash App, I would feel that that wasn't justice. I wouldn't feel that justice was served to... So again, I think it... Obviously, it depends on the crime. Now you see the hosts, Garcelle, Lonnie Love, Adrian Bayon, and some fill-in. I, I honestly, I couldn't be bothered to look up her name. She, her face kind of looks familiar. Like, I feel like I've seen her on something before. Um, I think her and Garcelle are both filling in for um, Jeannie, Mai, and Tamara. Now, I hate to see the way they started talking about the mostly men who post these TikToks. Now, not when... We have men in prison sentenced to life or death like we had with the Central Park Five, the Central Park Five, who were ultimately exonerated, or the Cleef Browders, or the Centoya Browns, who should have never been behind bars or were in pretrial confinement, or the mother who was sentenced to five years for registering her, her kid at a school district outside of the one that was designated like by her physical address or Jonathan Irons, who's the man who Maya Moore fought to get out of prison. You know, felt called to do this work, left her lucrative 
WNBA contract and then eventually married this man who was convicted as a 17 or 18 year old to life or prison basically or for that matter any other number of people who are in pre-trial confinement meaning they haven't been convicted of a crime they've been arrested or folks who were ultimately exonerated or who were behind bars and never should have been. So Santoria Brown should have never been behind bars, if you ask me. Obviously, Jonathan Irons should have never been behind bars. Someone wanting to get an education for their kid should not be behind bars. Not for five years, some years when Lori Laughlin is getting two months for scamming the whole system. I'll say the people in these TikToks, they deserve some degree of humanity. They deserve to have some connection with the outside world. Like you see in the clip, we don't tell them they can't have mail. We don't say that they can't read books. For the most part, we don't say that they can't have visitors. This is true, especially when you know you are innocent or haven't been tried. Or you're looking for some way to communicate with your family that doesn't cost upwards of 5 to $10 a minute. Not an hour, a minute. Or y your family has to travel across state lines across the country to see you in person. So technical technological advancements are only for those deemed worthy by society. Besides that, I think it's up to the viewer to, disc to, to do that research. It, the viewer or the subscriber to do that research and figure out whose TikTok they're subscribing to. Now I know you can scroll pretty fast and it's a, a view is a view. Great. But we got too many internet sleuths who are, who are way too good to, to sit up here and let a PEDO have 2 million followers on TikTok. I could go out of my way to make sure that they don't. If that comes to be the case. And like, again, I don't, I don't get on TikTok. But I'm certainly not gonna subscribe to them knowing that much. And if there's someone on TikTok or any other social platform who's trying to get around contact restrictions or they're not supposed to have like direct contact or any kind of contact with the victim and they're they're using social media for that purpose, then shut it down if we know this. Report that they have a cell phone. Report their account. There are mechanisms to stop this. But the answer isn't to strip everyone who happens to land behind bars especially when we know how many innocent people are behind bars, especially black people who are behind bars. There are at least three black women sitting up on that, the real panel. And Adrian Bayon, I don't know if she claims to be, but there are at least three black women sitting up there who are seeing this, knowing the exorbitant norm numbers and disparities and the mass incarceration system that has wreaked havoc on the black community. Again, if you're seeing someone who should not be online trying to get contact with the victim, report their account. Report that they have a cell phone. I, duh, they shouldn't have it in most cases. By the uh, rules of the, of the jailhouse. Otherwise, mind your business. Has this entire last summer not been about criminal justice reform? And now we have these very prominent figures who reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. This, this clip. Spewing this... Uh, uh, disgust, disgusting rhetoric. Are we still okay? Are we still okay with seeing 17 year olds locked up for the rest of their natural born lives, or in some cases sentenced to death for merely, merely being at the scene of a crime, not committing a crime, being at the scene of the crime, not actually participating at all? Those are the people that Garcelle and Lonnie. And the other hosts are saying, they're saying they don't deserve to be on social media because they're in prison. They don't deserve re rehabilitation or contact or communication or sympathy or warmth at all. I mean, when you become rich and famous, do you just lose all your sense of humanity? You're telling the locked up moms and dads they don't deserve to communicate with their kids on social media? Or have anyone donate money to them, regardless of if they're innocent or not? Because I didn't see y'all make that distinction. There was no saying, oh, if they're innocent. There was this blanket statement, this blanket assumption that everybody who is in prison 
must deserve to be there. As if the criminal justice system judges prosecutors don't get it wrong. As if they don't intentionally lock people up on false evidence every single day of the week, every hour of the day. At the end of the day, I guess the point of this video is stop watching the reel. I don't watch it and I just got even more of a reason never to watch it. The reel is like the breakfast club, unserious, incapable, and anti-black. I promise you that you are better off without watching it or listening to it because you can do all that they everywhere. You're better off. But that's what I got, folks. If you think differently about what I said, I welcome your comments. I love to have my ideas challenged, provoked, to hear other p opinions, the other side, opinions along the spectrum. Either way, you stay to the end, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you can come back and see what I have to say next. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.